So the cap rate, let's talk about it for a second. A property netting 60,000 a year that sells at a million dollars, it has a cap rate of 6%. That means the capital of 1 million is returning 6%. That's the cap rate. So in an area like, um, in, in a building like um, a single tenant building in let's say uh, Tennessee that has McDonald's and McDonald's has a good, I don't know, nine years left on the lease or something, that building, let's say it's netting 60,000, is probably gonna be listed at a million dollars. It's gonna sell at a million dollars because 6% return. So, so how, we, you know how we do it. We get buildings that are vacant, we'll put them under contract. So we get them at a pretty good price based on the fact that we're gonna bring these national tenants in them and the value of the property is gonna increase because the tenant is gonna pay so much and it's gonna now be uh, increasing the value of the building. So that building that has McDonald's that is now worth a million dollars because McDonald's is paying 60,000 a year. If McDonald's leaves, that building will probably sell at 650, 700,000. Because most owners of these buildings have never taken a training on how to identify national tenants, how to talk to them, how to negotiate an LOI, and how to get the national tenants in to get the building now worth, that was to be worth a million, maybe a million one, maybe a million two, because there'll be a new lease with a new tenant, boom, for so many years. So, well, let's talk about the bank then. So you're gonna buy that building that's a million dollars, McDonald's is in it, there are nine years left, and you go to the bank and you say, look, Mr. Banker, Mrs. Banker, this is 6% cap, speaking 6%, can you give me a loan? The bank is gonna say, show me who's, pay who's paying, so if it's an apartment building, storage facility, whatever, who are, these are multi-units or per square foot? You have two types of commercial real estate, those that are unit related, like apartment buildings, storage facilities, etc., and those who are that are per square foot related, like industrial buildings, retail buildings, etc. Um, like even hotels are per unit. How many rooms you have in the hotel, and what other services do you have, etc. So they're gonna look who is paying the rent. How is the income coming? That's the number one. A good banker will look. How is the income coming? Oh, it's coming from uh, apartment building, or it's coming from the single tenant. Okay, number two. What drives the traffic so if it's an apartment building what is creating demand for that apartment if it's a hotel what's creating the demand for that hotel if it's a single tenant building who is the tenant is it a national tenant does it have a corporate guarantee great we love it we're going to give you the loan now they don't give you the loan based on a cap rate of six percent they give you the loan based on a formula called dscr debt service coverage ratio write it down debt service coverage ratio the debt service coverage ratio, which a lot of people on TikTok talk about it, they don't even know what the initials are for, but it's kind of funny. DSCR, the bank says, our debt service coverage ratio is let's say 1.3. That means for every $1,000 in payment on the loan we're gonna give you, we need to make sure that you have 1,300 in income. So if your payment is gonna be 10,000, we need to make sure that you're netting 13,000 a month. So I repeat, debt service coverage ratio is a ratio. If another bank tells you our formula of the debt service coverage ratio is 1.2, that means on a $10,000 a month payment, we need you to be making 12,000 net. They're more aggressive. They, they are willing to take a little bit more risk because they're willing to give you a loan that's bigger. So now the loan becomes, you say, what well, I'm gonna buy it. Can I put 20% down on the million dollar purchase for that McDonald building in Tennessee? And the bank says, sure, we'll take 20% down. Let's see what the debt ratio is gonna be. And then they're gonna go through a calculator and they, you can use calculatestuff.com. You can go right now, calculatestuff.com and you can actually plug in 800,000. If you're gonna put 20% down, you're gonna get a loan for 800,000 and they're gonna put the interest rate at let's say 7% and they're gonna say, this is commercial building, gonna give you a 25 year loan or they're gonna give you 30 years if it's an apartment building, and they're gonna say, whoa, the payment is gonna be so much. Well, we can only loan you 700,000. Oh, but you advertise you're gonna put 20% down, commercial loans, call us. 
Well, yes, but your debt service coverage ratio is out of whack. You need to put more down payment so we can loan you less, so your payment will drop against the income you have. So you see, to answer your question regarding cap rates, the bank can advertise whatever to get people in. It's a gimmick. It's like we can loan you at 15% down. And then what? And then somewhere in the bottom line, it says other qualifications by apply, bank must uh, review borrower, property, income, etc. Then when you call them, they're going to say, okay, we have a debt coverage ratio of 1.3, for instance. So on every 10,000 payment, your income has to be 13,000. The loan you want, the payment will be 12,000. And if your income is 13, that's not going to be good enough. We need to loan you less. So you need to put 30% down or 35% down, etc. That's why my strategy of the joint venture is by far the best. Because if you get the building empty at 650, 700,000, and you're gonna bring the tenant coming in that's gonna make the building worth a million, the bank is gonna say, we like the payment. We like that now it's worth a million based on a cap rate of six, and your income is gonna be so much, we're gonna only loan you 650. Guess what? That's what you bought it for already. That's how you can do the deals, no money down. But I want to give you a caveat. In today's market, the bank is going to see you bought it at 650. They're going to be reluctant to give you no money down, but they'll be happy to work with the 15 to 20% down if you do an assignment of lease. So the bank will file a UCC1 for the business that's in the building and they'll file a lien for the mortgage they will give you. Hence the success of my real estate. I was able to convince the banks. I put the tenants. You have a corporate guarantee. It's not guaranteed by Sharif Medawar. I'm a mortal. But uh, Tommy Hilfiger is a company is going to continue even after Tommy dies. Burberry has been in business 115 years. They have a corporate guarantee in the billions of dollars. So you give me that loan and I will sign an assignment of lease in case of default and they will tell Burberry or Tommy Hilfiger or uh, Diamond International Jewelers, hey, make the payment to the bank because Sharif assigned the lease to us. We filed the UCC one filing. So we filed a lien on the business and I get a lower interest rate because it's less risk for the bank. Now, I tape these calls. So listen to that part again and again and again until you understand it. Because if you understand it, even if your credit is wobbly or you're new in the US, etc. You can still do some phenomenal deals with less money down, provided you can put the pieces together that we do in the joint venture. Very good. And Ricardo has a follow-up question to what you just talked about. He said, mm -hmm. is that income on gross or net income on debt service? The income is on the, the actual on the net, because on the net income of 13,000, you're going to make your payment from the net. That's why the bank on an apartment building. Like I have a big portfolio. So I have, I'll give you a good example. So I have 30 some buildings uh, in Old San Juan, like in specifically Old San. So when we do the loan, they take a chunk of, let's say 11 buildings, which we did a refi in December last year. And they took, I don't know, it was 11, 12 buildings. And they say, okay, so one upstairs is Airbnb and downstairs is commercial triple net. And the other one has upstairs office and downstairs it has a split space of this. That. So they had to take all the numbers, figure out all the expenses and then the net. And they said, okay, this is what we came up with. Are we in agreement? And we said, no, you put more expenses here on the Airbnb than we have because we run this internally and we do this, this. And they looked at it again and said, okay, good. We can loan you so much more. And we did a refi, cashed out several million moved it to California to, to continue rehabbing on some properties where the banks were reluctant to give us as much money as they promised because the interest was moving up and we continued doing business unusual. So they look at the net.